Hey all, here are OS reviews. A few months back, we did a review on the Yumadigi Bison, and I thought it was a pretty good value, rugged Android smartphone selling for around $200 and getting fairly competitive specs, including the Helio P60 octa-core processor along with 6GB of built-in RAM. Well now, a few months later, the company is back with a slightly upgraded model they're calling the Yumadigi Bison Pro. It offers slightly improved specs, such as a Helio G80 processor that's about 20% higher in terms of benchmark scores, along with a higher configuration model that gets you up to 8GB of RAM, a little bit more, but still has a very similar design and build, along with having the typical water resistance, shock resistance that you find in a rugged phone, you don't really need to put a case over it, and it has pretty much the same camera system that we saw from earlier as well, including a 48 megapixel rear-facing lens from Sony, and also a 24 megapixel teardrop notch cutout for the selfie cam. Still has the same 6.3 inch Full HD Plus display and 18 watts for charging with a large 5000 milliamp hour capacity pack, but one other Another new feature here is it has a thermometer built on in that we also saw on some earlier Yumadigi phones in the year, such as the budget-oriented A9. We were still in the thick of the pandemic. It made sense if you wanted to see if you had a fever or not, but as the world starts to reopen and move on, it may seem like something that is no longer quite as relevant, which means if you are an owner of the original, it probably doesn't make sense to upgrade, but if you are looking for a new budget rugged smartphone, this just makes it a little bit more compelling. Of course, it's a 4G LTE unlocked quad band smartphone, and it has also a 16 megapixel wide angle lens that is in conjunction with the primary 48 megapixel shooter, still a octa-core processor that is clocked up to 2 gigahertz. Now before we take a closer look at the design of the phone, some other packaging contents include a quick user guide, there is a USB Type-C charging cable accented in red, as usual from Yumadigi, quick size comparison here with the regular Bison on the right, you can see that they are almost the same in terms of the weight as well as the feeling and the design, the only difference is being a slightly different paint job and color scheme, the new model here comes in a bit more of a muted color, still we have a soft touch rubber accent on the back that feels pretty durable, there's a loudspeaker, kind of a lanyard strap, and then here is the camera cluster with the aforementioned 48 megapixel primary, that new thermometer is built on here, and we still have other functions like the original such as a barometer to measure air pressure, the bottom featuring USB Type-C for charging and syncing, some bumpers on the edges that kind of acts as a case in a way where if you drop it, it's going to prevent the screen from shattering as easily, and they are still using a Corning Gorilla Glass screen as well. Edges here are made out of a aluminum accent, and there is a camera shutter key, which is pretty convenient, so you can also take images if you are underwater, for example. I do like the red accent on that button. And then we also have a volume rocker, also made out of metal. Other side, we have the fingerprint scanner, so the exact same placement as before, and feels overall pretty comfortable. And then the nano SIM card slot also supports a micro SD card if you want to expand on the built-in memory. By the way, there is 128 gigs of built-in storage out of the box, so there's quite a lot of space for a $200 phone, I have to say, sufficient I think for most folks when it comes to taking just a few images as well as installing a few games here and there. Although I mentioned 8 gigabytes of RAM being an increase compared to the 6 gigs of the original, one thing to note is there is actually a lower end configured model of the Bison Pro that starts with just 4 gigabytes. That means if you are picking the kind of entry level edition of the Bison Pro, you could well technically have even a little less RAM. I think that's a little bit tricky, so just just keep that in mind, and when you're clicking on the different options, uh, make sure you choose that carefully. Alright, and now we are in, just entering our Google account info, and we do have a very stock version of Android 11, so not a very obtrusive launcher at all, which is great, and aside from just the standard Google apps and the Play Store which you get, there are a few extras in the form of Zello, which is a free walkie-talkie service, so if someone else downloads this app on their phone, you can kind of communicate with them if you're connected to the internet, but you can also uninstall it if you don't want to use it, and then like what we saw from Yumadigi's original Bison, there's a toolbox of additional utility tools. Software functions like a compass, barometer, pedometer, magnifier, flashlight are also found in here. We can take a look at what wallpapers we get included, and overall shows off the vibrancy of the screen, I'd say, for a budget smartphone, about a $200 device. It does look pretty sharp and vibrant, again, for an IPS non-AMOLED panel. 
And then the fingerprint scanner, if we just very quickly try it here, it is relatively fast, at least here when the phone is new, and seems to be pretty accurate as well so far. If we jump into settings, we can also verify a couple of things. So out of the box, you get around 13% of storage taken up by the operating system, and then 111 gigabytes are free and remaining. I do see a glove mode, which would make the touchscreen a little bit more responsive if you're using it in the wintertime, even without touching the screen with your bare hands. If you don't want to use these physical buttons, you can also go with the gesture navigation that is fully supported and afterwards we can just swipe and give us a slightly more immersive full screen experience. We also get the aforementioned smart key which you can reprogram to open other things like a single click, long click, as well as double click to trigger different things. And then the built-in keyboard by default does also seem to be just a stock Gboard. So very clean and not too much going on here. Of course, bezels are a little bit on the chunkier side if you're comparing it with a regular phone, but that's kind of the deal with most rugged devices, but it doesn't look too shabby I'd say, a slightly larger chin but uh, nothing too obtrusive, and then that small water drop notch, although the trend these days is moving more towards hole punch displays, if that. Uh, overall it's uh, not shabby, again a pretty large and comfortable screen size overall. Of course we'll be doing more testing with this device, including the camera and its performance and how it works out after using it for a little bit longer, but this has just been our unboxing and first impressions look. Overall again it's not going to be the kind of biggest leap if you have already seen our existing coverage on the previous Umadigi Bison, but still is one of the better values, at least on paper, for a rugged smartphone. Cubot and Conquest, some other Chinese companies that make these rugged smartphones, they usually charge a little bit more just to have that uh, more resistance to the elements as well as to shock and water, but uh, Umadigi have basically charged the same price they would even if it was a regular phone, but just with that more added durability. So in that case, if the price isn't different, then kind of why not? It could be worth just considering. But anyways, we'll find out more about how it stacks up in our full reviews, so be sure to stay tuned if you're interested. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the first look at the Umidigi Bison Pro.